Video games with strong narratives can be really clever about how they pull you into their game worlds and get you to empathize with their characters. That said, not every game-changing choice gives you the warm and fuzzies. Some float the idea that you can make a good or a bad choice just to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth either way. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video game moments where you are screwed either way. Number 10, Wasteland 3, Heads or Tails. Early on in Wasteland 3, when you're first able to set out on the world map of Colorado, you're frantically radioed in with a choice. You've already managed to piss off and just about wipe out the nasty Dorsey brood, but one surviving brother gives you a ring to tell you he's holding a civilian homestead at gunpoint. He then taunts you into coming to try to stop him from murdering the innocent family inside. So you get on your way over there, but then receive a second call informing you that there is an Arapo caravan carrying power armor that's in need of assistance, and the Patriarch expects you to get there on the double. There's only enough time to do one objective. If you save the homestead, the power armor is lost to the mutants who threaten Colorado Springs. If you retrieve the power armor, then the homestead is decimated, including the family and children inside. Either way, you're likely to feel pretty trapped into a crappy outcome. Number 9. Telltale's The Walking Dead – Lee's Final Choice There are plenty of moments in The Walking Dead where you're forced to make tricky choices. Cutting off your own arm, decisions over who to save, whether to steal from other survivors. But there's undoubtedly a single choice that absolutely sticks in the heads of Walking Dead fans, and that's Lee's final choice at the end of Season 1. You've spent the entire season trying to keep everyone close to you as safe as can be, none more so than your adoptive ward, Clementine. But there's only so much you can do in the zombie apocalypse. In his final moments, an infected and dying Lee finds himself in an impossible situation. You're forced to ask Clementine to shoot you and save you from becoming a zombie, or leave you to your not-so-nice fate. While neither result is great for Lee, this is especially painful because it's your last teachable moment for the young Clementine, and the last time the two are able to share together. Number 8. Heavy Rain – A Life for a Life Despite spawning several hilarious memes, Heavy Rain is an excellent romp of drama and intrigue, centering around the origami killer and his latest victim, Ethan Mars' son, Sean. Ethan is sent on a series of harrowing missions where he receives pieces of information leading to Sean's whereabouts as a reward. These pieces are absolutely crucial to finding Sean and having a chance at a happy ending in one of Heavy Rain's many possible outcomes. The trials require him to do a bunch of nasty things, like chop off a finger or traverse a horrific barbed wire maze. But perhaps the most morally difficult of them all is when Ethan is sent to kill a drug dealer. After arriving at his home, the wildly difficult confrontation is made even more complicated when the man tells you that he has children of his own. Given the circumstances, you'd be forgiven for taking him out anyway, knowing you need the next clue to save your son, or letting him go out of compassion and hoping it didn't bite you in the ass in the game's final act. Either way, this one was a brutally difficult call. Number 7. Telltale's Game of Thrones – Ramsay Bolton being Ramsay Bolton whether you've played Telltale's Game of Thrones, watched the show, or read the book, chances are you're pretty across the fact that Ramsay Bolton is a d- <gasps> Easily slipping into the most reprehensible characters in all of fiction, Ramsay's portrayal in Telltale's adventure game is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. The bastard of Bolton rocks up to the home of Ethan Forrester, heir to his house, and begins terrorizing your sister. You're given a choice to stand up to the violent hothead or let his actions go unchallenged, but this is a perfect example of damned if you do and damned if you don't. In classic Ramsay fashion, the scene ends with him slicing his knife through Ethan's neck. So I guess you may as well have gone out defending your family. Number 6. Mass Effect 3 – The Not-So-Happy Endings the fact that Mass Effect 3's endings are unpopular is not news, but it is worth dwelling on the fact that there were four endings to one of the most beloved trilogies in all of gaming, and they were all pretty damn unsatisfying. Hundreds of hours of galaxy trotting, character building, and awe inspiring events boiled down to stumbling toward a stream of light and choosing one of three options that had little to do with the series so far, but flipped the galaxy on its head. In the end, the Reaper threat could only be contained by either destroying the Reapers. The catch being you also have to destroy all synthetic life in the galaxy and massively screw up the Citadel and mass relays, not great. Or you could turn everyone in the galaxy into green-eyed human synthetic hybrids, or you could sacrifice yourself to control the Reapers. If all of those sound bad, then you're definitely not going to be keen on the fourth option, which is pretty much just giving up and letting the Reapers win. 
All up, we definitely felt screwed over. At least the Legendary Edition coming this year includes the extended edition of the trilogy, now remastered, plus over 40 DLC. So look, I'm definitely gonna play it again anyway. Number five, Far Cry 3, leave the island or kill your girlfriend. Honestly, the title of this one says it all. Far Cry games are excellent at showing the lengths people will go to when push comes to shove, and just how many shades of moral grey lie between black and white. Or maybe there's just a bunch of shades of black when it comes to this one. Jason has a really crappy time with this ending no matter what he chooses. At this point, you've been pretty tied up in the crazy tribe's ongoings, and the priestess Citra has taken a considerable liking to you. You've spent the entire game doing missions for this tribe, but they're all sort of murdery and nuts. So when Citra kidnaps your mates and girlfriend, you're pressed into deciding to fully side with the tribe and kill your girlfriend or escape the island, resulting in Citra's death. No matter what your choice, it's kind of a bad and weird time for Jason though, as you'll either leave the island mourning Citra to the wild bewilderment of your girlfriend, or stay on the island, bone Citra, and get stabbed for it. Far cry. Number four, Life is Strange, Bay or the Bay? In one of the more divisive choices in adventure game history, Life is Strange concluded its whirlwind of character development, time traveling shenanigans, and horrifying revelations by making you choose whether to save the life of Chloe, your before anyone else, or the lives of everyone in Arcadia Bay. Thus, Bay or the Bay. This seems pretty straightforward as a numbers game, but you've spent every episode of Life is Strange saving Chloe over and over and she means a hell of a lot to protagonist Max, and probably also you by this point in the narrative. Whoever you choose to sacrifice, it's devastating. Especially as you're not able to use your time traveling powers to save Chloe as you've done for the entire game as they're what's been causing all the problems. Dealing with either Chloe's death after all of your effort to save her, or the deaths of her family and so many people you've grown to like is a crazy hard choice, so it's a rough ending no matter what you choose. Number 3, Fallout New Vegas, Vault 34. Fallout games could have filled out this list between faction disputes, troublesome quests, and inadvertently pissing off your companions, but the biggest lose-lose we couldn't leave out has to be Vault 34 in New Vegas. Basically, Vault 34 is a ticking time bomb. It's leaking radiation into the water, which is causing the crops of nearby farms to die, and subsequently creating widespread famine among those dependent on those farms. So you do your hero thing and check it out. But as it turns out, there are people still trapped inside. You've got two choices. Deactivate the reactor and save the townspeople outside the vault, dooming those inside to a slow death in the dark, or reactivate it so they can escape, thereby dooming those outside to starve by continuing to destroy their food source. It's a horrible choice and neither outcome is good. Even the game seems to feel super bad about putting you in this position, as there's no karmic punishment either way. Number 2. Mass Effect. Ashley or Caden? Mass Effect makes another appearance on this list, but it's for good reason, as the choice between saving Ashley or Caden late in Mass Effect 1 is a classic example of a game telling the player they're screwed either way. There's just no way to save them both, and this decision affects which of the two will appear during the rest of the series, so it's a pretty big deal. Less of a big deal if you already had it out for Ashley the Space Racist or Caden the Moody Revamp of Knights of the Old Republic's Carthonassi. But still, dropping one of your main squad mates only to continue the series for two more full games was a pretty crazy move at the time, and plenty of players felt super trapped in the decision where they couldn't save both. Number 1. Far Cry 4. Which dictator is right for you? That's right, Far Cry is back on this list, but honestly, the balls to the wall back Ooh. crazy storytelling of this series really deserves it. This time we're on Far Cry 4. Basically, you spend the whole game helping the rebel group The Golden Path overthrow certified nutjob Pagan Min. Two central members of the group are Sabal and Amita. While Sabal wants to preserve the traditions of the culture, Amita wants to modernize. Now when you arrive at the end of the game and need to choose who to back, both of those sound totally respectable, right? Not so fast, this is a Far Cry game. I'm assuming that you're remembering the whole getting stabbed after having sex from earlier in this list. If you side with Sabal, he goes full crazed theocracy on you, vowing to execute any and all former dissenters for sins against God, which can only be washed away with blood. So that's bad, guess you should go with Amita. But then again, maybe not, since her version of modernizing involves revamping the region into a totalitarian drug state, which conscripts child soldiers to defend drug fields and murders the teenage girl thought to be the reincarnation of a goddess. Double yikes. Maybe you should have just left Pagan Min to it. 
Let me know down in that comment section which are your favorite video game moments where you were screwed either way. I've been Jess for What Culture. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.